Hello, I am Dr. Lisa Lacan, and I am here to answer some of your questions. Over the course of the week, I've gotten some questions, um, so this is going to be very interesting. So are you ready for the first one? First one is, who the heck are you? But they didn't say heck. Who the heck are you? So. I am Dr. Lisa Lacan and I have a master's in rehabilitation counseling as well as I am a certified rehabilitation counselor. I also have a PhD in psychiatric rehabilitation. So that's who I am. The next question, what is rehab counseling and is that like a camp counselor? <laughs> What is rehab counseling and is that like a camp counselor? Well, no. Rehab counseling is we work with individuals with disabilities. So they could have, they could have uh, developmental disabilities, they could have physical disabilities, psychiatric disabilities, uh, cognitive disorders, things of that nature. And we work with them to help them choose, get, and keep a job so that's our model choose get keep is really employment based it's centered really around employment so say for instance if Jane was in a car accident and Jane does not have the ability to walk anymore and Jane uh, her left leg or one of her legs her right leg left leg whatever or both legs could be amputated we come in to assist Jane with devising a plan so that she can remain on the job as long as reasonable accommodations are there and as long as Jane can perform essential functions of the job. So we work with occupational therapists, we work with the HRs at, you know, with employers to try to get those reasonable accommodations for Jane. We work with Jane so that she can drive herself to work in a sense so that she can purchase a vehicle uh, that may be beneficial for her. So this is what rehab counseling, this is what we do. Okay, and then the next one is, what is psychiatric rehabilitation? So psychiatric rehabilitation is we help treat the side effects of psychiatric disabilities. Now, um, some of the side effects of psychiatric disabilities could be homelessness, uh, unemployment, underemployment, uh, it could be under education. So we come in and we develop um, sort of like a treatment team. So if we see someone that has a psychiatric disability, they come into my office um, and we do assessments. I cannot determine and make a diagnosis. I don't have um, the licensing to do that. I do thorough assessments and then I give that information to uh, a psychiatrist and then we work together as a team so that the person in my realm can stay on the job. So say for instance, if the psychiatrist has prescribed a certain medication that is making my client sleepy on the job, I will have a case conference with the psychiatrist as well as with the client because the client does not want to get written up and I will explain to the psychiatrist listen perhaps you need to change the time of the dosage because she's falling asleep on the job which is going to cause her to get written up or fired so that's what I do as a psych rehab my lane is employment so employment related however you know we help again three things choose get and keep a job. So that's what we do in psych rehab. All right, so here's another question. What is Urban Tools for Change? All right, so Urban Tools for Change is the podcast that I'm coming out with, and I am going to launch that in May. Why May? Because May is Mental Health Awareness Month. It's very important that we understand about mental well-being as well as mental 
unwellness. We have the, the mental capacity. So what today I'm going to do, just for about mm, 10 minutes, if that, we're going to uh, go over a couple of things. One, the foundation of our mental state. I have my little book here. Sometimes I, I don't want to get off script because I'm on a time thing right now. So the foundation of our mental state. So this is only gonna take about 10 minutes or so. And if you have a, a notepad, if you have pen, pencil, you know, take some notes. Also, do me a favor, like this video and share this video because this information, especially during this time of the pandemic is very important. It's very selfish of you not to share this good information. You can't keep all this good information to yourself. All right. so. You all are ready? All right, so the foundation of our mental state is typically based on three things, okay? The first one is based on how we feel. So number one, how we feel. Number two is based on what we think. That's number two, what we think. So it's how we feel, what we think, and then the last one is what we do. You got that? Feel, think, and do. So think about that. Feel, think, and do. Now, our feelings, because we have different realms in our bodies and things of that nature, our feelings is based on an emotional realm. Okay? So when you feel a certain way, when people say you're getting all in your emotions, well, technically, you really are because that's the compartment of who we are that um, oversees our feelings, so to speak. So what we think, that realm is the cognitive realm. It's cognition, how we think, how we process information and things of that nature. So that's cognition, that's the cognitive realm. And what we do is based on our actions. So how did we perform certain things that's physical that's the physical realm so you have the emotional realm you have the cognitive realm and then you have the physical realm so mental health or mental wellness is the balance of all three working together our feelings our thoughts and what we do our actions so if something is a little off kilter, we may be a little mental unwell. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you can be mentally unwell for two days. Sometimes you can be mentally unwell for three days. But typically, if you are having, you know, that balance, that's mental wellness. So having the ability to balance those three things is considered what? Mental wellness. Correct. So I always look at the opposite of words. So the opposite of wellness is what? Unwellness, right? So mental unwellness typically comes from a couple of areas. One, genetic and biological. So the genetic is I inherited certain things from my parents, from my ancestors, things of that nature. Biological is a chemical imbalance with my brain, having a brain disease in a sense like schizophrenia. If you have been diagnosed with schizophrenia, you have uh, a chemical imbalance so your brain is not functioning correctly. The second one is trauma. Okay, trauma. Trauma can create mental unwellness. And in Urban Tools for Change, I'm going to specifically talk about trauma and how trauma can lead to anxiety and how anxiety can lead to stress and how stress can lead to depression and how depression can lead to one of three areas of suicide because there are three levels of suicide okay so we're going to talk about that and then the third uh thing that can determine mental unwellness is our lifestyle do you use a lot of drugs 
Do you hit the bottle quite often? You know, um, how do you live? Do you live a healthy lifestyle? Are you overeating or are you under eating? Are you not sleeping at all or are you sleeping too much? So in the podcast, we're going to explore these things and then we're going to look at a couple of things. We're going to look at the patient health questionnaire nine. We call it a uh, PHQ nine and it's nine questions that they ask and nine questions that I can ask my client just to determine their, their mental health and their state of well being. So with that said, I look forward to uh, getting more questions. I look forward to um, uh, working with you and uh, I can't wait until next month until we launch uh, Urban Tools for Change by Dr. Lisa Lacan. With that said, have a wonderful, wonderful, safe day and don't forget about mental wellness. It's our feelings, our thought life, as well as what we do and our actions, okay? Now, let me, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example of someone who is mentally not in you know, mentally unbalanced, all right? So, <clears throat> and I always give examples work-related because I love employment. So you have a supervisor and your supervisor wants to fire you and you are fired from your job. So you feel a certain way. You feel like a loser. You may, you may feel like you did something wrong. You may feel like a loser. So you think, you know what? I think I'm no good for anyone. I'm no good for my family. I'm no good for life because I feel like a loser. I feel rejected because I feel I am. So I feel rejected. I have been rejected. And then what do you do? You ponder on those thoughts. You ponder on the thoughts of I'm rejected. You ponder on the thoughts of I'm no one. You ponder on those thoughts that I'm less than. I'm not able to uh, uh, provide for my family. So guess what you do? You go into a phase. Like I said, guess what you do? You physically go into a phase where you may not want to perform daily activities, okay? You may not want to shower. You may not want to have sexual relations with your spouse. You may not want to engage in any of the things that you found pleasurable. And then what happens is you start to, at that point, depression sinks in, right? So that depression sinks in and now it may manifest into thoughts of suicide. And we're going to talk about that at a later function, but that's how it operates, our feelings, our thoughts, and our actions. So say for instance, you may not go down that path. You may get fired and you may feel like uh, hitting your supervisor, but do you actually hit your supervisor? No, because you think about the consequences that could happen to you if you uh, hit your supervisor. So your actions are going to be what? One of non-restraint. Well, 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 actually, no, you're going to restrain yourself. <laughs> you're going to restrain yourself. You're not going to not restrain yourself. You're going to restrain yourself. So you're not going to hit your supervisor, right? Because I know, listen, we've had some supervisors that we felt like bopping them over the head. But what stops you from bopping them over the head? What stops you from bopping them over the head is because you think about the consequences of doing that. So you hold back, self-control. So you no longer operate on your feelings, okay? And then your thought, your cognition, you're analyzing, okay, if I do this, what would happen if I do that? What would happen? So you're starting to critically analyze the possibilities of what could happen as a result of how you feel about your supervisor. So that's it in a nutshell. 
but we're going to learn and and do so much more together i'm looking forward to this i'm going to provide you with some uh urban tips and if someone asks me a question why is it oh why is it called urban well it's called urban because that's just who i am i'm i'm i was born and raised in an urban city i work in an urban city i i i love i love the community i love my urban community i just i can't imagine a world for me without having my hands in the urban community i i love it and as a matter of fact on urban um twos for change we're going to have an urban beat section where i am actually going out in the street i'm wearing a mask of course and i'm asking people questions like what are your thoughts about you know have you ever heard of psych rehab um what's a mental health two box um questions about what is mental health so I'm going to be asking questions, going out in the street, asking my clients certain things because I don't like just giving you information. I like also understanding what my community, what they think. And I like you to hear directly from them, not from me. You're going to hear directly from them and it's going to be funny. It's going to be funny. Oh, I love my community. They're so funny. So anyway, ah, like, share the video. Even if you don't like it, thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't care what you do with your thumb. Just do one of those thumbs and share the video. We're going to have a great time together. We're going to laugh together. We're going to cry together. We're going to be upset together. Um, we're going to have a great time together. Sometimes, um, you know, I'm going to... Uh, have my coffee sometimes I may have my wine uh, I may have my water but other than that we're going to have a wonderful time together on urban twos for change and I'm looking forward to, to hearing from you it's going to be a podcast and um, it may be a video as well so I'm gonna I'm gonna do both but um, that's it so have a wonderful day be safe out there on those streets. Please enjoy your day. Bye.